Welcome all of you to the PG update session two on skill demonstration. I am Divakar. We'll be speaking on basics of retinoscopy in today's topic. The learning objectives for today's session is retinoscope and retinoscopy. Under retinoscope, we'll be talking about the purpose and also the types of retinoscopes, the parts of the retinoscope, and optics of retinoscope and the plane mirror versus the concave mirror. In retinoscopy as a procedure, we'll be talking about this clinical setup, then the clinical procedure, how the retinoscopy is carried out and the most common errors which are occurred when you're performing retinoscopy. So let us go to the retinoscope. So it is an instrument which is used to find out the far point or to find out the refractive status of the eye in an objective way of assessment. So this is a spot retinoscope and a streak retinoscope. Uh, in the spot retinoscope, you can see uh, it, the light is as a source of a spot. In a streak retinoscope, you can see the vertical beam of light which is projected in this uh, uh, picture. So the advantage of a streak retinoscope, we can uh, assess the refractive errors much easily and better way in cases of astigmatism. Uh, whereas in a spot retinoscope, it will be a little difficult. Uh, whereas the spherical refractive errors, you can assess with both the instruments uh, pretty easily. Coming to the parts of the uh, retinoscope instrument, uh, the retinoscope is instrument is attached to the battery. Uh, it can be a rechargeable uh, battery type or it can be a disposable battery. Uh, further connected to the filament bulb, which gives a source of light. Then a condensing lens is attached to it. So the condensing lens uh, will uh, help you to uh, focus the light rays. And you have uh, a peep hole where the examiner is seeing. And the light which is falling out from the condensing lens is focused onto the semi-silver mirror. So the advantage of this is the reflected light can be seen through the semi-silvered mirror. So further it is divided into two systems. One is a projection system where we talk uh, about the bulb, the light source, the condensing lens, the mirror and the focusing sleeve. And uh, with respect to the observation system, there is a peephole of the retinoscope where the examiner is observing it. And when you are handling the retinoscope, it is better to use the thumb and it is called as a one hand uh, technique. So these are commercially uh, available retinoscopes uh, in the market like Keeler, Hein, Welshalin. There are much more. Uh, various other companies are also available. And this is the front view of a, a Keeler uh, retinoscope uh, on the left hand side on the uh, Hein retinoscope in the middle and the well sand retinoscope. This is the uh, examiner's point of view on the back side. Uh, how does the uh, retinoscope look like? So let us see uh, a demonstration uh, of this uh, retinoscope uh, video. So you can see the examiner is switched on a high end retinoscope and uh, you are able to make it as a thin slit and a thicker slit by moving it to the concave side and the convex side. And uh, you can see you can rotate the sleeve of the retinoscope uh, that's the advantage of a streak retinoscope which is demonstrated over here and uh, you can see the head of the streak retinoscope where the sleeve is moved up and down and that's the parallel stop which is uh, applied and uh, whereas with respect to the uh, keeler retinoscope you will have uh, a sleeve and you will not have a parallel stop instead you will have a pupil size uh, adjustment for the uh, people uh, this is how examiner is opening the uh, retinoscope and demonstrating it. Uh, the bulb is uh, removed and uh, uh, you can see the large uh, battery handle which is a rechargeable type battery. And this is a lithium battery uh, handle which is uh, kept over here. So this is how uh, it looks like. So uh, coming back to the uh, retinoscope P plane mirror and the concave mirror. By moving the sleeve up and down, what we are doing, uh, either we are moving the lens up and down or either we are moving the condensing uh, lens or the bulb up and down. 
the instrument like uh, hein and uh, keeler uh, and various other companies what they do is uh, they move the condensing lens up and down when the condensing lens and the bulb are closer together it diverges the light rays and it acts as a plane mirror what you are seeing here on the right hand side in this case you can see the uh, condensing lens and the bulb are away from each other so it it gives out a converging light rays and it acts as a concave mirror so a streak retinoscope can act as a concave mirror or either as a plane mirror by just moving the sleeve uh, up and down this is a mechanism of that coming to the retinoscopy uh, procedure so first we should know the prerequisites of these instrument the, you should have a streak retinoscope lens rack uh, or a trial set or a loose lens set uh then you should have a trial frame and a fixation target which should be uh ask the patient to look at the target so when you are performing the procedure initial adjustment is the height examiner and the patient should be at the same eye level and the uh, examiner working distance has to be checked when the examiner is performing the procedure and uh, right eye to right eye is uh, examined and the left eye to left eye is examined and the room illumination has to be dim and uh, instructions has to be given to the patient to look at the target so let us see uh, a demonstration video uh, on this here the examiner is uh, using a retinoscope uh, looking at the right eye and the examiner is measuring the working distance which is very critical uh, the shorter the distance more the working distance par you have to detect you can see here examining uh, the working distance and it comes to be 65 cm and you calculate the working distance as uh, 65 cm here the examiner is uh, examining the subject's uh, right eye uh, refractive error by making the left eye of the subject to look at the target now the examiner is moving on to the left hand side to uh, examine the uh, left eye of the patient so this is how the procedure is performed as a retinoscopy uh, in this case you can see there is uh, a streak retinoscope is used and the light reflex you can see on the pupil you see it as a width movement when you move the streak retinoscope a vertical streak and you are gazing the horizontal meridian and you are moving on to the uh, horizontal side and you see there is a width movement so width movement we neutralize with a plus lens and uh, here the examiner is using a plus 1.25 adapter lens and you can see the sleeve when it is moved there is a still width movement you can see so we have to increase the plus power in this case uh, to get a neutral point uh, with 1.25 it is not neutralized so the next lens uh, will be used by the uh, examiner is 2.25 and you can see there is uh, almost uh, looks like uh, uh, neutralized no there is a little bit of width movement so that means 2.25 is also uh, not a neutralizing lens so further uh, examiner has to increase the plus power so in this case so the next lens which will be used uh, uh, in this case will be a plus 2.5 or a 2.75 to get a neutral point so uh, we can see here 2.5 is used by the examiner and you can still see there is a small amount of uh, width movement is seen and uh, you have to continue increasing the plus power and uh, further the uh, examiner has to increase the plus power by another 0.25 diopters say 2.75 right now the examiner is placed 2.75 and you can see it is almost neutralized so there is a chance that if you use a higher power than this say example uh, 3 diopters or uh, 3.25 diopters so there is a higher chances you can get an against movement so let us see uh, what is uh, examiner is trying to do uh, uh, after this with the 2.75 now the examiner is placed three diopters and you can see there is a small amount of uh, against movement is observed over here uh, with this so coming back to the uh, points here so the patient is asked to look at the fixation target 
start with the right eye it is always better so streak is vertically oriented always start with the horizontal meridian first reflex if it is in the same direction so that is a width movement so what we saw in the previous video uh, there is a width movement and you started neutralizing with a plus lens and you saw that the examiner started with a plus 1.25 and got neutralized with the 2.75 adapters whereas plus 3 adapters were showing a slight against movement so plus 2.75 will be considered as a neutralizing lens then if you have a patient who you are seeing an uh, against movement so then you start neutralizing with the minus lenses so let us see a uh, uh, next uh, uh, video. So in this case, uh, you can see there is an against movement is uh, observed. So with a streak retinoscope kept vertically and examining the horizontal meridian, you can see there is an against movement. So in this case, you will start with a minus lenses. So how much minus to start? Here the uh, examiner is uh, starting with uh, uh, minus 0 0.5 adapters of minus lens. So let us see what happens with the minus 0 point, uh, uh, 0.5 adapters of minus lens. You can see minus 0 0.5 adapter lens is used and the examiner is still uh, examining on the horizontal meridian and you can still see there is against movement is observed. You can see the against movement even with 0 0.5 adapters. So the next step is go for a slightly higher adapted power say 0 0.75 or 1 adapter. And if you see there is the movement is faster and the width is uh, uh, thinner than compared to the other. So here the examiner is used minus one adapter and you can see uh, it, it's almost uh, neutralized with uh, uh, minus one. So let us cross check with say 1.25 or a 1.5 adapter. So are we seeing an uh, uh, against movement or a width movement with uh, the next diaptric lens? So uh, continue to look with minus one, it's almost neutralized. So let us see the next lens uh, which is used over here. So the next lens which is used is minus 1.5 and you can see with 1.5 there is a width movement. So it clearly indicates that you have put a more uh, power. So you have to go back to uh, minus one. So you saw an against movement, so you neutralize with the minus lenses over here. And uh, so you have to do it similarly for the other meridian as well. So if you have an astigmatism, then you have to you have to assess both the meridians. There will be a different uh, neutral movement. So then you have to uh, neutralize that. So in the first case, what we saw plus 2.75 in both the meridians and the net value is deducting the working distance. The working distance of this examiner what we checked was uh, 65 centimeters. In diaptric power it comes to 1.5 adapters and by deducting 1.5 adapters 1.25 will be the uh, neutral value, uh, the net value and 1.25 will be your objective uh, value for the net retinoscopy value and from that you will start the uh, subjective refraction. In a second case, we had minus one as a neutral point and with deducting 1.5 adapters as the uh, working distance. So you will have a net value of minus 2.5 adapters. So minus 2.5 adapters net value, uh, you start the subject to refraction. So this will be the starting point for the subject to refraction. And what are the most common errors what you face is uh, one is incorrect working distance. If you don't maintain the proper working distance, uh, example, if you're working at 50 centimeter and using a 1.5 adapters lens, no, uh, you have to use a two adapter uh, working distance over there instead of 1.5 adapters. Uh, doing retinoscopy from off axis, instead of doing in a straight and you're doing from an off axis, there is a chances of getting an error and blocking the patient's view. You always ask the patient with another eye, which is not examined. To look at the target and uh, to move the mirror uh, up and down to get into a plane mirror or a concave mirror there is a little bit of confusion you may face so these are the common errors which you face when you're performing retinoscopy uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity uh, to talk about retinoscopy procedure and uh, keep watching uh, our videos uh, thank you all